Hello YouTube, it's uh, John Joseph here, just another IT guy. Um, I am hailing you guys all the way from the Bahamas. Uh, I just thought I would, you know, um, review some of uh, this HDMI wall plates that I got from Monoprice. Um, basically, this is not just going to be another review. What this is, what this is going to be, is this going to be a video about? Well, I'm, I'm going to review the devices. Um, we can tell you guys what how they're intended to be used and basically how they worked, you know But then also what I want to do with this video is I want to um, Answer one or two of the questions that I see a lot of people are having um, On the internet and then also solve one or two of the problems that I see that are Very very common that people are that are having and they, what they're doing is they're giving these devices You know bad reviews and I don't like to give devices bad reviews especially if the bad review comes basically because you're using the device wrong you know because as long as the device works the way it was designed to work i think you should give it a good review because if you're trying to use it wrong then it's kind of your fault so let's get on with it um what i have here is <clears throat> i have um two hdmi over cat5 balance basically that's what they are um basically what these devices do they they allow you to connect um you, your hdmi devices over a longer over a longer distance so what these extenders do they basically extend your hd video signal up to 30 meters which is like about 90 feet that's what's on the packaging it says 30 meters and that's about 98 feet roughly right and it uses two cap six ethernet cables to do that right now this unit is going to give you uh resolutions all the way up to 1080p so if you guys are looking for 4k you might want to not get these ones i think they have an, an upgraded model to this that has that does carry 4k you can check the monoprice website and you know and, and check these out <clears throat> now i initially bought these because um of the price that was my main thing it was cost effective it was really cost effective it was a couple of bucks i think it was like about maybe 20 or 30 bucks you can check the monoprice website i think they have them for like 15 dollars now um so yeah so i bought these because of the price now in my field uh when we do see these devices they and when we install these for what is this wait okay my uh my table is is losing its character anyway so when we um it's just a little scratch there anyway um <clears throat> when we see these devices in my field we usually have to pay around anywhere from about uh say 100 200 sometimes 400 bucks for these devices um they, the price the price can be expensive it's not exactly these devices but we have these ones are passive the ones that we use are usually active yeah, they're powered on either one or sometimes both ends. But anyway, let's get on with these ones. All right. So the reason I bought these is because it was cheap, right? It was a good is a good way for me to solve the problem that I had. I'll tell you what the problem that I had was. <clears throat> the problem that I had was um, I and and what what's actually becoming very common now is people want a more cleaner look for their home theater. So. In your TV room, for example, what we what we normally do is we normally put the TV cleanly on the wall and we just have one cable coming from that TV all the way over to where we store the other uh, devices. All of the HDMI devices are going to be stored away from the TV. So for my setup at home, the reason I bought these, I had TVs on the wall. Uh, sorry one tv on my wall in my tv room and i had all of my equipment under my stairs right so that everything's tucked away neatly we don't have wires all over the place it's just one clean tv look on the wall and of course there are some other components that are going to be, allow me to control those devices remotely so i don't have to point at those devices i'll walk you through all of that um, I'm going to be posting videos about how I arrived at my entire, with my entire setup. Um, but for right now, as I build the setup, I'm going to be um, just walking you guys or <clears throat> just doing videos so that you guys can see all of the issues that I've had. And this is one of the first issues that I came up, came up, 
came across. Okay, so these devices are excellent devices. They do exactly what the package says it does. Very important. It only does what the package says that it does. And what this device does is it takes one HDMI source and sends it over two CAT5 cables or CAT6 cables to another HDMI source. That's it. It doesn't do anything else. Now, I'll show how these work. Basically, on the back end of this, we have inputs for two CAT6 cables, and then you have outputs for two CAT6 cables, right? Now, problem. Most people are saying that when they connect these devices, they don't see a signal, like it's a black screen. Well, Based on the, uh, the manufacturer, the way they designed these cables, they designed these to have connectors for less than five meters coming out of this device. So for example, if you have a HDMI cable longer than five meters, you may want to use a shorter one that, that could cause some problems. And I think the reason for that is these devices are passive devices, so they don't power the HDMI. So what happens is the longer the run, the you lose more signal over time, so you may end up with a black screen. So coming out of these devices, you may want to use the shortest possible HDMI connector as possible, going in and going out of these devices, right? So that's the first thing. The second thing is please make sure that when you do run your CAT6 cables, that you want to make sure that the in one is connected to the out one. And then the in two is connected to the out two. You don't want to cross these cables over. They have to be directed, connected directly one one. So the same cable that's plugged in the in one has to be connected into out one and vice versa for the same uh, for the in two. Then also, if you can, also make sure that your cable is around as closely as possible the same length. That's another issue. You have some syncing issues if cables are different lengths. So you, some of you guys may be experiencing an issue where you're losing signals for these devices and stuff because the cables could be a separate lengths. So you want to check that. Make sure your cables are as closely as possible the same length. Okay. And I'm sure you guys know how to because I, I, I'm, I'm going to guess you guys are terminating your, your own cables, right? So I hope you're going to be sticking to the comp. Uh, the standard um, 568B or 568A on both sides. Of course, you know you need a straight through cable on both sides for these devices. I'm just going to assume that you guys know that, right? All right. So now with the specs for this device, back to what I was saying, the reason these devices don't work for me is because these devices are designed to work for one device to one device. What I have is I have my receiver, which is an which is an on-kill receiver. And I have the monitor out connected to the in here. And I had the other end connected to the TV. These devices are not designed to work with receivers. I know, I know it sounds dumb. Yes, it does. But I'm, I've, been, I've been trying to figure out why. But actually, if you go on the Monoprice website, they'll tell you that. They'll tell you that these devices are not designed to work for receivers. I'm with receivers. So I'm going to save you guys just a few bucks, the shipping time, the weight, the excitement, and all that stuff. And you get it. You unwrap this. And it does not work with your receiver because it is not designed to. So stop um, writing all the bad reviews about this product because actually, if you connect this one device to like a satellite box and the other end to a TV, this works perfect, perfectly fine. As long as you're not looking for 4K video, as long as you're, you're not um, looking for 4K video, you should be perfectly fine. It should be no problems. It works perfectly well. I've been using it like that for a while. I had no issues. When I connected my Onkyo receiver is when I started um, having all the issues and I started to do the research and I found out that these devices are actually not designed to work with receivers. I was thinking it had something to do with the digital content protection. These devices support digital content protect protection. 
Um, I was thinking it had something to do with it being passive, meaning not powered. And I was saying maybe the Onkyo receiver did not output enough power. What I did was I went ahead and I got a, uh, don't have it with me, sorry guys. But I went ahead and I got a, um, a, a powered HDMI splitter. That's one of the common devices that you use if you if you don't have enough power going over your HDMI cable. What you can do is you can use an HDMI splitter to inject power over the wire so that it, it can get enough power to, to your TV if, if you're doing long runs. So I thought that may have been the issue. That is not the issue. Save yourself some headache and some time. If you are, guys are trying to connect these devices to receivers, it does not work, okay? I'm saving you guys here, okay? Now, like I said before, this is one of the issues that I came about. I'm gonna be posting <clears throat> some more videos with other issues that I've found while building my home theater in my TV room. Um, so um, I just go ahead, hit the subscribe button below so that you guys can get to my next updated video with um, uh, you know all of the other issues that I had building my home theater. Okay, I actually um, fried um, my Onkyo board today, so unfortunately I can't show you guys a demonstration with this device. Uh, yeah, trying to, um, anyway, uh, it's too embarrassing, I'm not going to tell you. Anyway, so I'm going to wait until I get my new receiver, then I'm going to show you guys how I put my system together. I have home automation, I have uh, basically um, all of my devices are being controlled or from a Zigbee remote, it's awesome, you guys are going to love it. So um, just um, hit subscribe. You're gonna see a lot of the, uh, a lot of those videos um, popping up very soon. Um, yeah, I hope I hope I was able to help someone, um, save someone some time, save someone some money um, with these devices. Like I say, excellent. They work perfectly fine if you're using one device um, to a TV, like a satellite box, or um, you know whatever it is, a Roku box. Um, sometimes I get video from my NAS, from my QNAP NAS. All of that works perfectly fine without issues. If you are using it from a receiver, please note that these devices do not work. And also, if you are going to use it for one device, pay special attention to the devices. One is actually a sender, and the other one is a receiver. So meaning you need the sender connected over, over by the source. Devices goes in there, and the receiver device is connected over to the TV, and that one pops in there. Okay, thank you guys for watching, and I hope that this video was informative for you. See you guys next time when I post my other video on uh, connecting everything up and showing you how everything works.